All right, so listen, I got an idea, okay? So as we know, the material I've been using to seal the wave guide is this type of stuff right here. Now this, this is fiberglass and vermiculite. Pretty much a complete inorganic matrix, okay? Woven together, and it's been pretty good at sealing the wave guide. Pretty airtight. This is the wave guide for reference, okay? Just microwave need to come out of here. No gases can go in. And nothing from the atmosphere can go in either, so it pretty much needs to be a complete seal at the front. But it, there needs to be a material that microwaves can pass through without interference. And also, it needs to um, block anything coming in or out. And these type of materials do that. So basically, I just put this up at the front. Uh, you know, of course, cut it to a proper square. Put a silicone, RTV silicone around it. There we go. Half hermetic seal right there, okay? This works, but it's not the best. Like I said before, it's woven together, so it's not one solid piece. So it, there will be some gaps, you know, inevitably, and it's not the best, okay? Now, the big boys up in the big industries, what do they use? They don't use that stuff, okay? They use things like this right here. What is that? Pure quartz glass. 99.99%. Okay, maybe not the 0.99, but at least 9. So, what is this? Quartz glass is not just regular glass. This is made of quartz. Duh. So, it's very high temperature resistant. The, the melting point, even compared to like borosilicate glass or like Pyrex, is way higher. Um, and on top of that, very high pressure resistance, low thermal expansion that's usually what messes up glass okay because the glass was shot under thermal expansion because um if it heats up too fast it starts to grow the glass crystals start to grow and it can't handle that it shatters okay but this has very low thermal expansion especially in comparison to other glasses making this more resistant to thermal um rapid thermal changes okay so Here's the issue. This was $15 for a pack of four of these off of Amazon. Not bad, right? But let me tell you when these get expensive. When you want to get them bigger than this. So as you see, right now, this does not line up with these waveguides, okay? These rectangular waveguides that I make, which are based off of the standard sizes um, that you can find online anywhere. Doesn't line up. It almost fits. Like, it, it fits um horizontal, vertically, not horizontally, okay? If I were to get a piece that was long enough for this... It literally costs like $70, okay, for just one piece. And I don't want to do that. You know why? I know I'm clumsy. I know I'm experimenting. I'm going to mess up. I'm going to shatter. I'm going to crack it. Hell, I might just crack it just by screwing it down on there too tight. You know, I've done that before with borosilicate glass. I'm not doing that with this, okay? So, here are my thought and my idea, okay? This right here, this is a pipe, okay? Now... In nature, everything is circular. All types of energy move in a circle. I mean, look at everything in nature, okay? The earth, um, the way how water moves, like a vortex, the way the universe, the Milky Way universe is shaped. You know, it's all circular. None of it is 90 degree angles. All this is man-made stuff, okay? And microwaves are just another form of natural energy that we have created devices, i.e. a magnetron, to, you know, um, create at our own will. So with that being said, there are such things as circular waveguides. Now, this is a, a piece of inch and a quarter uh, pipe. And this type of pipe is big enough for the magnetron to fit in laterally like this and be able to radiate the waves off of. So, here's my idea. We have these right here. These are floor flanges. Inch and a quarter floor flanges. Now, these I put two together. Okay. And the idea is we're going to have a pipe like this. This will be the pipe the magnetron goes in, okay? And it's going to have a, a cap on the end. So that way, you know, the, the microwaves will go the direction we want them to go. So we're going to have that cap on there like that. And um, then this is going to screw in to the floor flange. Now, this floor flange, um, I have a piece of uh, quartz glass in there right now just experimenting. So you see the quartz glass in there. Can't put my finger through. You can hear it. We're going to have that siliconed up RTV silicone. And then, um, so that way it's a nice airtight seal that can screw in there, okay? And we're going to have this. This will be welded onto the reactor. So to pretend like this piece of metal. Oh, oops. All right. Pretend like this piece of metal is the reactor. This is going to be welded on. Now, I tried to find a union to um, weld so that way this could screw into the union. And the union is welded to the reactor. I couldn't find one. 
Bad luck, I know. But whatever, because this pipe is actually cheaper than a union, okay? And since this is all experimental and this is going on the old reactor design, it was kind of throw away anyway. So this will go on there, and then this will screw on here. And then guess what? The magnetron will be mounted. I can screw it on there. Then the magnetron will be mounted like this. Boom. I just cracked it. Really? See? This is why I'm not paying $70. I just cracked this because I accidentally set all this on top of it. Okay, oops. Oopsie daisy. It looks pretty cool in my opinion. It looks kind of badass. That's how it works. This will be on the reactor vertically. And um, in theory, it should work. And that's it, really. Um, that's my idea. Dude, did I just crack this one? I, I, I just cracked this one, too. <laughs> Oh, that's two down, two more to go, right? Let's hope we don't mess up the next two. Man. Piss. That's why I'm not paying $70, okay? All right. So we got this set up. This is the basic magnetron setup. It's plugged into the high voltage generator. And this is a this, you know, traditional test just to show that this works. Oops. I had you upside down in my bad. So anyway, let's turn her on. Oops. Seems like the uh, electromagnetic field was a little bit too much for my phone. So let's try that again, but a little bit further away. <laughs> you know, you can't really see it on camera that well, but the light bulb is on. Which basically means um, microwaves are successfully being generated from this dilapidated magnetron. So now that we know that this magnetron works, we're going to hook up our setup, okay? Okay. Um, we got it set up. The magnetron is laterally placed in this inch and a quarter pipe. I wonder if we can see it this way. Uh, not really. No, you can't really see in there, but I know you believe me. It's in there. Okay. Get my, um, pliers right here. All right. Turn it on. Let's see what happens. Um, oops. That was not supposed to happen. Now let's do this for real. Um, it's on. There's like some smoke coming from around here. Can you see that? There's like some smoke or something. And then the microwaves are not coming through. Because, um, well, the light bulb isn't lighting up. Let me move it a little bit closer. No. The microwaves are not going through. What the hell? Oh, well, I probably should turn this off. It's a lot of smoke or something that was being formed. It still kind of is. I'm not sure what that was. I mean, like, I think they were reflecting off and just bouncing off and destroying each other or something. Because, um, you see that thing is smoking in there. They weren't going anywhere. Like, like they were they were formed but it was so I mounted it like vertically like the most intuitive way I had to put some counterweight on it it wanted to keep like popping up but anyway it's gonna go into this chamber and then light up the light bulb if this works so let's see oh oh um no that did not work <laughs> Perhaps the um, inch and a quarter pipe is way too small. Perhaps it's interfering with the actual wavelength of microwaves. Let's try a bigger pipe. All right, same size flange, but a bigger pipe. Um, uh, okay. Apologies, I had uh, my capacitor, it ended up dying. So let's try this again. Uh, bigger size pipe, but same size flange. Okay, it's making microwaves, but the light is not lighting up. Hmm. Huh. Let's try just bigger size pipe, no flange. Okay, I'm going to try the same size pipe, one and a quarter inch, with uh, no flange. Let's see. Microwaves are pr being produced. Once again, they're getting killed. Smoke being produced. All right, let's just try a... Uh, pipe on it this way blah 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 whatever you get it is um inch and a half by the way you hear that damn it man 
None of the pipes worked. None of the sizes, none of the things. Damn. I just spent $200 on pipes and flanges and stuff. Just for none of it to work and all of you worth nothing. That's how I love to spend my weekends. Damn, man. That sucks. Well, at least we know that there's another alternative. A rectangular waveguide with um, either quartz glass or that fiberglass stuff. It's just like, man, that, the modularity of this stuff would have been so cool. I mean, even look at it. It looks badass. It really does, but didn't work. That's tough. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. Let me know. Anyways, thanks for watching. Um, if you want to support me, I have a Patreon. First link in the description. Thank you very much. I'm still working on this new design. See you next time.